Welcome to the station of decapitation without your head. I'm Nasty Neal, and I'm joined by movie and TV director of such films as At the Earth's Core, The Land That Time Forgot, of course, Motel Hell, Kevin Connor. Very cool to have you here. Thank you. It's a real pleasure. Thanks, Neil, for including me in the program. Yeah. So, yeah, I have a lot of questions from uh, from uh, listeners they've sent in, so it should be a fun show. Oh, good. Good. Yeah. So uh, your first, your very first movie, also your first horror movie, is uh, From Beyond the Grave. Uh, and from what I gather, you're not, you weren't the biggest uh, horror movie fan. So how how did that come about? Uh, well, I I was an editor. I started off in the editing rooms in England and uh, got on very well and did well and decided at one point that I needed to move on a bit. And I thought I'd go into producing. And I bought a uh, optioned. Um, some short stories by Chetwin Hayes, and they were all modern horror genre type uh, stories, um, with 12 of them, and uh, two friends, we uh, wrote for each into little half-hour um, uh, scripts, the idea being that, you know, go on TV and uh, modern uh, background, so it wouldn't cost a lot. Anyway, they didn't get anywhere with that and so on, but they ended up on uh, Milton Sabotsky's desk um, of Amicus Films. And uh, he said, I'm going to take four of these and I'm going to make them into a compilation movie, uh, rather like, uh, I think he'd done um, House of Blood, was it? Uh, other things he'd done anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and you can direct it. And I said, well, I've never directed before. And he said, don't worry, editors make good directors and I think you'll, you'll do fine and I'll surround you with very good uh, um, the technicians, and he did. I mean, Alan Hume and a great art director, Morris Carter, and, uh, you know, just really good people, so I was safe. But I knew my way around a set and so on, but it mm -hmm. was a question of dealing with actors, which I'd sort of done with when I did ADR on movies, but uh, not as a director on the floor, you know, with that 60, mm -hmm. 70 people to sort out. Anyway, that's how it came about, and Milton Sabotsky gave me my break. Yeah. So uh, you said you didn't have a problem with um, with actors since you did you did some uh, ADR and were on sets before, but you know you do have like a, a lot of veteran actors in this movie. Uh, so how 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 was that to deal with, and was did that actually help you? I guess uh, since you had well, it actually actors. helped me. Um, yeah. It was the early seventy three, I think, and the English film industry was a bit in the doldrums and in the English economy. And um, there wasn't a lot of work around for actors. And um, because they're short stories, you know, they're like uh, 15, 20 minutes each, uh, mm -hmm. each, uh, each story or whatever. Um, you know, you could get these guys, David Warner and uh, really fine actors to come in for four days or five days or whatever it took to shoot uh, uh, the section. Um, and uh, everybody's happy to get the work. And you know, Donald Pleasance and uh, Angela Pleasance and uh, uh, Leslie Ann Down, it was her first film film. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's um, really a, a, a terrific, uh, terrific cast, I, I must say. And they're, they're all professionals. And they um, you know, had Peter Cushing, of course, as a mainstay in it. And he's a, a real gentleman. And everybody responded and enjoyed. We had a good time. So, uh, yeah, I had yeah. The, the best... <laughs> The, the clue is to get the best actors when you make movies. Sure. Did did did, did that uh, did that change your opinion on horror movies at all? You know, making one and uh, working with uh, actors that have been in horror movies. Uh, no, no, I thoroughly enjoy, I, I enjoyed it actually, um, mm -hmm. but I wasn't a fan of um, shall we say slasher type okay. horror genre. Really, I mean, I like that horror if it's well done and and intelligent. Mm -hmm. but, you know, sort of Stephen King type of thing, but um, not when it's just uh, slashing and stuff for the sake of it. Mm -hmm. So uh, at, when that movie comes out, does that lead right into uh, the land that the time forgot? Like, were people happy with it and were you getting offers right after? Yeah, Milton and um, his partner were very happy with it. Um, you know, became in under budget and all the rest of it and on schedule. And, uh, you know, I, I being an editor, you know, we got it cut together pretty quick, uh, quickly, and he was very uh, pleased with it and amazed at that. Um, and uh, he didn't alter anything. He didn't. There were no great um, problems with uh, you know, changing or losing scenes and things like that. And uh, and they had this uh, 
Edgar Rice Burroughs uh, in the in the works and uh, offered it to me to direct. So mm-hmm. I said, yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, because I'd enjoyed directing for the first time and it was a uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. So yeah, they, they yeah. Uh, I grabbed it. So did the editing help you as a director? Because uh, uh, like knowing how, you know what to shoot because you're kind of thinking ahead of like how it'll be edited. Yeah, well, a lot of um, directors have a background of editing. Um, you know, David Lean was a sort of classic example. Uh, but oh, yeah, of course, yeah, because you know the bits you want and whether you've got them as you shoot them, and you know when you've got a scene uh, complete with all the little bits or pickups that you need, or one line here, or one line there, and you know you can fit it in no with no problem. You don't do everything that you know. I sort of taught mm-hmm. myself. You know, I learned more from bad directors than I did from good directors. <laughs> sort of what, right. you know, because if sometimes if you do a thing in one shot, then you want to speed it up or edit it or whatever. You can't. You're well in those days with uh, you know with film, it wasn't so easy. But um, no, no, you had to give you give yourself uh, a leeway with a you know extra cover and cuts and go to close up. You don't have to use it, but if you got it, then it might save you later on when you re- look at your film put together and it's so so slow and you need mm-hmm. it to to speed it up. So you know, give yourself the leeway. Yeah. So w- what's the experience like when you're directing a movie with a lot of like giant dinosaurs in it? Uh, well, <laughs> well, I mean, obviously those kind of things are all storyboarded and uh, worked out, uh, and then those early films kind of before CGI really yeah. took over and we were just at the end of a uh, hand puppets and uh, Ray Harryhausen type of um, you know techniques and so on um, it, it, it was no it was fun because all that the, the dinosaurs and stuff that was all shot on um, a Vista Vision plates uh, in front projection um, so it was all really worked out well before um, so it was no surprise and I think we spent like three or four weeks, you know, shooting uh, all those plates and uh, you know, getting them prepared and how we were going to do things and so on and so forth. So when you hit the floor proper with the actors, then you can sail along pretty easily. Yeah. Now, were you familiar with uh, with the stories before you started doing those movies, the Edgar Rice uh, Burroughs stories? I would, of course, I'd heard of him through because of Tarzan and so on, but I can't mm-hmm. say that I actually picked up uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs books to read. Um, mm-hmm. Of course, I did. Once uh, this came along, I wanted to know you know, more sure. about him. Uh, fascinating, a huge array of books and amazing um, mm-hmm. output, I must say. Uh, yeah. 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 And it's amazing they've, uh, they've stood the test of time and still being made into movies. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. Still still going strong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what... what um, before you start became an editor, what kind of stuff did you like? Like, what kind? Of, were you a movie fan? Uh, oh, absolutely! Yeah, I was. Uh, I um, I got into movie films when I was like twelve and thirteen at school. I filmed the school sports to get out of them, basically, really. <laughs> but um, but uh, yeah, we're talking about the early fifties and uh, mm-hmm. so on. So, you know, there wasn't um, there was an English uh, cinema, but it wasn't huge by any means you know it was a kind of compared with, the, with america it was fairly small um so the fodder was mainly saturday morning movies you know kind of westerns and things and um uh, american films uh, th- there were british films but few and far between so um no i had an interest in movies way early on i um where i lived in the hertfordshire the americans had built a this could be maybe boring for you, but it's it's interesting in mm-hmm. a way. Um, the Americans had built a, a hospital for the D-Day landings and so on, just to show how old I am. And they're very very close to me. Anyway, the, after the war, they you know the place became covered in brambles and so on and so forth, and nettles and things. And early fifty fifty one or two, the um, there was a huge light glow of light coming from this area where this uh, camp had been so i went and cycled down there and uh, they're making a movie and they turned this place into auschwitz which was phenomenal i mean i just couldn't believe my eyes 
you know, a film set at night is a really magical place. And uh, there was all these, you know, Germans and people trooping in into the gates. And they, got, they had the gates of Auschwitz and stuff and, and dogs. And, you know, really, it was quite impressive. And that really sort of triggered triggered me into uh, saying, I'd like to be part of this. Mm-hmm. It's a weird since, story. <laughs> yeah, since the... Uh... Since it, uh, the English cinema wasn't uh, really big yet, um, what did your parents think when you said, like, when you, this is something you want to pursue? Uh, well, um, my father introduced me to a f- documentary film director who lived nearby. Um, he'd done a couple of feature films, but he, he was mainly in. <laughs> this guy had been out of work for, you know, about five years or something. Mm-hmm. Um, so it didn't look too, too good. Um, but I was in. I was sort of encouraged, but not um, not overly, I must say, because it wasn't. No, nobody ever thought there was a job in films, if you know what I mean. It wasn't mm-hmm. like a career thing that you you, you could apply to, uh, apply for. So, um, I, yeah, actually, I sat down and I wrote to um, every film company in the tele, in the London telephone directory that had either photography or film or studio in its title. It was like 120, 140 or something. All these letters I wrote out. I got out about 20 back um, and all negative and saying, oh, I'm sorry, nothing going on here. And so, uh, you know, because Fox had uh, studios there, MGM had studios, but they're empty, uh, you know, the warehouses. Um, but uh, anyway, I uh, went back to school and um, got a phone call a week later, there's a documentary company up in London, Soho. Would I like to be in the editing rooms as a trainee assistant? So I, I grabbed it and got my foot in the door. So mm-hmm. that, that came about. Yeah. So uh, what was it about uh, Doug McClure that uh, that made you uh, have him in, in so many of your movies? Oh, uh, well, Doug, I, I don't. Um, I th- we were in. I think Land was with part with AIP or they were going to distribute uh, Sam Arkoff's company were going to distribute it um, so I think we had to have an American name in there and um, uh, Doug, Doug, uh, Doug's name came up um, and uh, I couldn't really place him because I hadn't watched Westerns, you know, TV mm-hmm. the Virginian and so on um, yeah, Trampers anyway, uh, no, that came about because we had to have an American uh, um, uh, you know, name uh, in there at a, at a reasonable price because uh, the budget of these things was like quarter of a million dollars. I mean, they were very, very low budget uh, mm-hmm. movies. Um, so yeah, we got lovely Doug, who, who turned out to be a, a real. Uh, I learned a lot from him. You know, his, uh, especially in his fight scenes and so on. You know how he used to throw punches and at the camera and you know they're very he had a, all that down to a fine art so it was a good lesson yeah yeah so uh when, when um did you what were some of the hardest parts you found when you transitioned from editing to to directing um well, to be honest i just I, I probably the fact that i was not um trained as a theater director or director per se um in handling actors but i've been you know working on films for like 20 years and worked with great uh, directors and attached to you know big big movies mm-hmm. you know and you watch the staging and how they did it and so on so and you know you kind of learn more by watching than actually doing so it it wasn't the the greatest challenge um, mm-hmm. Sounds a bit. Uh, no, it's uh, honest, though. Yeah, it. Uh, you know, it, you sort of stepped into it because I'd been around it for such a long time. Um, but dealing, you know, speaking to actors and speaking their language, uh, I guess, um, was the biggest challenge uh, because it, it was, you know, it's in a way, it's a sort of another world uh, from mm-hmm. where they're coming from and what they expect and. Um, some want handling, some don't want handling, some want help, some don't want help. But a lot of it is just common sense, you know. And mm-hmm. you just listening, you you can listening to them. You you hear whether it's right or wrong, you know. Mm-hmm. Did you continue to edit after you started directing? 
Oh, um, I did a couple of movies because there was a gap between the horror film and um, uh, um, uh, Land of Time Forgot. I mm-hmm. had to go off to, uh, I can't remember, I think I went to Israel, cut a film in Israel, I'm not sure now. But um, yeah, I did a couple of things in between. Mm-hmm. You but you didn't, you didn't edit your own films? Um, no, we, I usually had an editor attached to it, but they, they were, they were, I had, uh, usually there were guys I'd worked with before on, and I'd known for several years on, I knew they were good at it. And, uh, uh yeah, and I used to take a reel in, a, in the other room and then cut it and trim it and do stuff myself. Yeah, no, I could still, I still edited myself. Um, mm. but I had a, a, you know, a full-time editor on the show. Yeah. So, uh, was your goal always then to uh, to eventually um, make Hollywood movies come to America and make movies? Well, not initially. I don't think it doesn't sort of you know it's such an amazing bit of luck to become a director in England. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I went along with it and as, as far as it went. And then you know, one day you think it's like Everest. It's there. You've got to have a go at uh, Hollywood. Um, and so. Um, there came a point where uh, I thought, well, now's the time to uh, have a crack at it. And right, no, no, I think in the, in the um, late 1980, I came here um, to Los Angeles to Hollywood mm-hmm. and to have a go at it. And you know, if you fail, you fail, but at least you've had a go at it. And so you you can't think for the rest of your life, oh, if only I'd had a go at Hollywood. But I came here, I got lucky, and um, mainly um, mainly in the TV world. Uh, mini series and you know international mini series and stuff. Uh, I did a few features, but not unfortunately not that many. It's a it's a tough world to get into. Uh, it really is. Mm-hmm. And, but uh, no, I've been I've um, I've been all over all over the world on these uh, big mini series. Yeah. So when you first come over, how how different was it uh, from what you were used to? Not really. I mean, the, you know, the mechanics of making a movie are the same whichever country you go to, and all the technicians. I mean, I did the thing. I got my break on when I came here. It took me about three months to get a job, and that was on this uh, motel hell, and um, a, a great crew and uh, the producers. You know, I didn't really know any technicians and so on, but um, they came up and uh, with with names and good people. And again, surround yourself with the best technicians you can, and uh, you know it. It, it, it uh, you can you can muddle through and sail sail through, um, mm-hmm. and so that's what happened there. But uh, in terms, the only difference was the the job of the operator. Um, in England, the camera operator and the director work on the move, camera moves and set up and, and so on, and the cameraman gets on with the lighting. Once once you've established, you know roughly what the shot's going to be uh, in England, you fine tune that the camera movements and so on with the operator. In America, the operator kind of sits back and the cameraman, the DP, you know runs through the camera stage by stage with you and then he lights it and so on then the operator operates nowadays it's the dp of course um lights and operates a lot of the time so (laughs) that's changed but no that was only sort of significant thing that threw me slightly was the um the the operator participation in england he would participate a lot more in in the shape of the shot Mm-hmm. Uh, before I talk about Motel Hell, uh, Craig Lindbergh uh, asked a question here, uh, who's an FX artist, makeup artist. Uh, oh, yeah. How does how does it feel that these movies have been spoofed on the new Mystery Science Theater 3000? Oh, I don't <laughs> Well, I haven't seen any of them. I'm right. sure they've, been, they've spoofed up the wazoo. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean... It, whatever you do is going to be spoofed. Every film, every actor gets spoofed. Everything gets spoofed these days. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's what it is. Yeah. They, yeah. P- people still remember the movies. That's, that's a, that's yeah. a bonus. Yeah. That's, that's the main thing. Yeah. Yeah. So motel, ha- motel hell, how, how do you get involved in motel hell? Well, again, uh, you know, it's the luck of the, the luck again. Mm-hmm. It seems to be a lot of luck, um, but you've got to, you know, when the moment comes, when your luck, falls into place you've got to be able to step up and so on 
And the only contact I had in uh, L.A. was a was an agent. He didn't want to sign me up or anything, um, but he did said he'd look at my reel. And so I heard, but I heard nothing back from him, typical, for about two or three weeks. And then uh, I arranged to go down, pick up my reel from his uh, uh, PA person at the front desk. As I walked in the door to get my reel, he came out of his office, this uh, guy, with a cup of coffee and said, oh, hi, Kevin, how are you doing? And I said, oh, nothing's happening. Come on here, he said, I'm going to get you a job. So go in, sit down. He picks up the phone, calls another agent. I've got a young director here. What do you got going? And the person had uh, said, oh, we want, we're looking for a, a, a director to do a horror film. Um, has he directed horror films before? And uh, I said, yeah, 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 and so on. And uh, I went up and met the two boys, uh, the Jaffe boys at uh, UA, um, and that was Motel Hell. Um, but if I hadn't walked in that room, you know, in his office at that moment, two minutes earlier, two minutes later, it would never have happened. It's just the way, you know, the luck of the game. So, uh, that set me on, <laughs> set me <a laughs> another horror film. <laughs> All right. So, uh, how, how how different was the original script to, to what you made? Well, it was a lot different. When um, I must say, they gave me they they I managed to get a copy of uh, of um, uh, the um, Beyond the Grave, and they ran it with them, and they loved it, and so on. So they gave me the script to uh, go back and read, and I read it. And the first shot, you know, long shot, night, motel, hell, uh, flashing neon sign, cut interior. Uh, uh, room, uh, motel room. A uh, fat woman is in bed with a dildo and a pig. <laughs> I thought, oh my god! I, this is what I. <laughs> um, uh-huh. So I read. I finished reading it, and uh, so I said, you know, guys, take out all this juvenile stuff, and you know, make make it uh, a dark comedy, make it a black comedy. You know, mm-hmm. um, it's in. in not spoof it, never take the mickey out of your your subject, but mm-hmm. play it straight, you know, uh, and make the dialogue more intelligent and the situations and, and just, you know, play it as it is. And they they agreed and they, they the two guys rewrote it or we all, we all did it, pitched in and um, that's what you see. So it's a slight, it's, slight, it's a little bit camp, but um, you know, when you look at it today, but, uh, and I wanted to avoid seeing any blood or gore so it's all what you don't see that makes you you know sort of a uh, cringe and so mm-hmm. but you never actually see a knife go through flesh or uh, whatever you know it's uh, yeah it's, it's all in the mind mm-hmm. that's interesting because uh you know texas chainsaw massacre is the same way everyone thinks it's bloody and it's really not either there's not uh blood on the on on the fa- on film it's you know it's uh you just think it is because it's very uh, disturbing yeah. movie <laughs> say the word art but that's what in your editing you cut from uh, what's going to be horrible to a, to a, 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 the opposite type of scene you know a, a, a nice picturesque picture you know, countryside you know the girl sitting on a log and uh, birds fluttering around a, t- a total opposite image to the one you just left wherever mm-hmm. you can that it's uh, it makes you know, fun editing yeah so uh, so how did you get uh, Rory Calhoun as Vincent uh, Rory well we I think uh, can't remember the actor we were after at the time. Ah, I wish I, I, I might remember by the end of uh, the show. But uh, anyway, um, he turns us down, this other actor, and um, Rory's name came up. And of course, he fitted in. I think he came in uh, to, to the to meet us dressed in the uh, you know the overalls, coveralls, like the famous uh, picture of the the, the uh, farmers when his wife, farmer and his wife uh, holding pitchforks and things um he came in dressed like that and of course he was perfect uh, and he got exactly what the script was about uh how droll and and so on that it was going to be and you know it's kind of a lot of the time as the actor walks in the door you know that's the guy you want mm-hmm. no, and he, so he, he was great fun he was great fun mm-hmm. so uh so he was on board with uh w- w- with it right away absolutely yeah yeah mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, what was he like on set? Because uh, I've heard that he could be kind of a character. Oh, he, well, he's a, yes, but I think he'd he'd uh, 
calmed down from what he was. Right, doing. right. That's true. He was quite a firebrand. Firebrand. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a, what's the word? Uh, you know, he'd been in jail, I think, but oh wow, drunk and driving <laughs> and falling and, and so on. And no, he was uh, in his day. He was, uh, but by the time he got to me, I think he was kind of he'd married and had a lovely daughter, and they were, you know, he was <laughs> he went home every night when we rapped, so he didn't, uh, you know, yeah, and uh, he's, uh, how, yeah, he's great in it. And uh, uh, how about Nancy Parsons? She's also great in the movie. How how did she get involved? Uh, I, I guess she just came through the casting um, people, and uh, again, you know, she walks in the door, and uh, and she she's you know, it's a very fine theatre actor as well. So um, you know, and she looked the part, and um, she she knew, again, she she understood it. There was no question about uh, what the the gist of the, or the the tone of the film is going to be. Mm -hmm. So no, that she was a she was a the shoe in she was she was great yeah now something people have uh debated uh like horror fans is there's, there's uh, some type of relationship between the two uh was that intended or are you surprised by uh, that? no it wasn't <laughs> it's people think out thinking the out thinking the the uh, <laughs> uh -huh. afraid to no 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 there's not really you think, mm -hmm. what, you think what you want to but uh no, that wasn't in my head anyway all right. Are you ever surprised by like uh, for any movie you've done where people have different theories of what something means or uh, what was intended? Oh, you do a lot of the time, but um, I mean, a lot of the TV stuff I do doesn't have that kind of a um, situation. But uh, yeah, from time to time, but it's usually in feature films, you know, that 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 happens more than in TV. I found. Um, <laughs> the, yeah, yes, yeah, so it, it, it can happen. It sort of throws you from and you think, "Oh, really?" I mean, this is, <laughs> that was what was in the script, and um, that was in the you know discussed with the writer and the actors, and that's the way it came out. Um, yeah. Did do, do you have any? Uh, what what's a line that you get the most from Motel Hell? For oh, for me, it's uh, a meet. Okay, I was going to say uh, it takes all kinds of critters. Yeah, yeah, all kinds of critters. Yeah. Farmer, yes. Each <laughs> man's got to eat. Mm -hmm. No, no, there's, there's quite a few good lines in there, yes. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you, you worked with John uh, Ratzenberger before the movie, so did you become uh, friends with him when you worked for him on uh, Warlords of the Deep? Warlords of the Deep, yeah, that was in um, uh, back in England. Uh, and, you know, we were casting away at Pinewood Studios, and uh, uh, I think he was literally... He wasn't on his way to the airport, but I mean, within a couple of days, he was returning back to America. And so he, he you know, he popped in and he said, well, I might be off to back to America. But, uh, you know, he was he had such a good look about him um, and he was going to play a, you know, a bad guy anyway. So and he, he looked <laughs> he'd, he'd, he'd American and he had the, the dialogue and uh, he's very sharp sharp guy and, and, and a nice demeanor and everything so i thought oh we, we, we can get along and then he looks good for the part and he read well and, and so on so yeah he be and we became very good friends and uh, still are i mean he's uh rocketed away and to fame fortune but i, I you know i see him from time to time and uh, uh and so on yeah but i yeah. you know but my guess was that he, he this guy is going to go somewhere you know mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah, when we came back to to America, yeah, he, there he was, and uh, and I think he did two or three films with him in the apart from Motel Hell mm -hmm. TV stuff. So yeah, so so the garden scene is like it's very bizarre, and uh, I always loved it since I was a kid. Uh, what did you think when you first read that scene, and and was was it fun to to, to film that scene? Yeah, was it was the, great, especially when they pluck them when they get plucked out of the ground with the the uh, <laughs> uh the the digger thing uh or you know when they dig the hole first of all and put the put the guy in the motorbike guy and slide him in and then but my favorite was when they pull they, they you know they pull them out um <laughs> with, the, with the rope i think it was um no that was great fun it was night shooting as well and uh things buzzing around and whatever but <laughs> yes uh, that was a lot of fun, but you know when you you read those scenes, uh, 
as you read them, it's all it, it immediately you, you got the image in your head because uh, you know, the boys did a good job on the, on writing the you know writing the screenplay. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's, it's all there, um, but it, we didn't nothing storyboarded on that. It was uh, you know it's, it was kind of no it it, it it fell into place very quickly. Yeah. Did you ever talk to? Did you ever? Uh do any like uh talks to work with them again on any other kind of movie the jaffe brothers no i did we did try and get uh, um i think i got an option on um uh, uh trying to think it it, uh, it was a sci-fi story um because the, the boy's father was an executive at uh, ua so we had a, a bit of an in there as you can imagine and um I just again, sorry, my brain's gone. If I think of the title, but it was a quite a well-known um, sci-fi uh, story. Mm-hmm. Uh, my brain's gone for a minute, but if I think of it, I'll <laughs> come up with that one. All right. Yeah, uh, we, we did. We failed. I mean, we tried. We got a screenplay, but uh, it was quite expensive for the the, the time period and so on. And uh, I don't think the UA execs got it you know they didn't understand it they they kind of really weren't into into uh, sci-fi quite so much then mm-hmm. yeah was there ever talks to do a sequel to motel hell um no we've a lot of people have called wanting to remake it and uh-huh. so on um and i've always i think the bo- the boys or mgm own the the uh the film or the script i'm not sure um but it's it's never come back. No, there's never been a prequel or a sequel um, suggested. It's just a just a remake. Mm-hmm. Well, how would you feel if they remade it? Uh, well, um, you know, the first thing that crosses my mind is uh, I think I'd like to make it. Just do it. <laughs> right. Maybe, no, no, maybe it's better somebody else um, interprets or has has a bit more. If they bring it up to date, it might be a whole different, uh, you know, take on it and so on. So, no, no, good luck. Good, no problem. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah. they, did re- they did do a remake on uh, Land of Time, I forgot, I think. Mm-hmm. Well, when they remake something that you directed, uh, do they ask your permission? Do they let you know that they're doing it? No. <laughs> no. Yeah. no. Just, <laughs> yeah. I think once they get the, uh, the, the option or the copy, you know, the permission... Uh-huh. Uh, do it then uh, uh, go out the window no i haven't uh, i've never been asked uh, all right this is a true story was, uh, years ago when i was interviewing the director of uh my bloody valentine and i asked about the remake that's coming up and he actually didn't even know so i broke the news to him that that they were remaking his movie on the show he, he wasn't too happy about it but let me know but, if you hear of anything uh, <laughs> well let you know anyway good good luck to anybody that can get get films going because it's it's uh, not easy it mm. never was let's see i cry uh, craig lindbergh's on the line craig yep yeah. hi hi how are you guys hey yeah. craig hey good uh, i got a question um it's kind of like an honor idea that some movies like get turned into spoofs on a show called Mystery Science Theater. And they did um, two of the movies that you did. How do you feel about that? Oh, that right. They, that they did that. Yeah, this uh, this came up before, and I'd, I've never... Oh. Uh, but I've never seen any of them, um, to be honest. So I don't know if they, if they were clever about it or um, smart or just, you know, did it for the sake of being whatever um but uh, why not i mean everything gets spoofed doesn't it i mean uh, it doesn't matter bond gets spoofed or you know big big actors get spoofed so it's the way that's <laughs> that's what it is so you just uh it doesn't but it doesn't bother me now i mean you know i had i had fun making it in the first place so if all they can do is a spoof and good luck try and do something <laughs> original <laughs> Yeah. Did you watch him, Craig? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. I mean, it was like quite surprising to see that they, you know, uh, that they did do it. Uh, and it was quite nice to see them that I actually saw. Like, I used to drag my parents to see movies of that type. Uh, whether they wanted to go or not, I always took them or they took me to see movies like this. So to see a movie that I liked in the theater and seeing it spoofed by mystery science theater, because I'm a big fan of that show. 
it was like two things I really adore being put together. Yes. It was yes. just really cool for me, yes. If the spoof is intelligent and it has something to say, but just to do a spoof and or take the mickey out of it, I don't know. It's, you know it's, well, well it, what they do is they, I don't know if you're familiar with how Mystery Science Theater works, is what they do is they watch the movie and then they make quirks and, and quips and little jokes about what they see on the screen. So it's not, so the movie runs. They just oh, say funny things they, about what's going on. I used to see a show and they, 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 they like, they're all sitting in the front row, like almost a silhouettes. Yes, that's, that's it. exactly it. That's it. Oh, that's it. Uh, I did see a few, but I didn't see the one about land and you know and any of my movies. But uh, I can I can imagine. <laughs> uh, well, what's on the Netflix? I'm not sure. Uh, you, I, I'm assuming you're in England at this point. No, I'm in Los Angeles. Oh, LA at the moment. Oh, okay, there. then you can if if you find if you know someone or if you have Netflix. Yeah, they yeah. have the Mystery Science Theater, and it's on the new the new version of it. Science Theater. Okay, I'll make a note of that. Thanks, Craig. Yeah, you're Any, very welcome. Thank yeah. you. Anything you've ever done, Craig, been on there? Oh no, <laughs> maybe I would hope so, and someday. Yeah, I think it's very right. good honor that they do do it. Uh, I, I suppose <laughs> it's a badge of honor in a way to get. Uh, oh, I get, think so. I <laughs> <laughs> think it's the coolest thing ever. That it's, it's worth doing. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for calling in, Craig. It's always good to hear from you. You're very welcome. Be Thank careful. you, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. So uh, I, I want to ask this. Is uh, How important do you think like uh, the Fangoria magazines and the Monster magazines were at the time uh, for, for a movie like Motel Hell? Because that, that's where I first saw the image oh, of, yeah. uh, of the pig head. And that's where I, it's really, honestly, not just here, it's the first movie I asked my mom to rent uh, when, when, when we first got a VCR. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tell your mum I appreciate that. I might have got a residual for it. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, I've got I've got copies of um, people send me the, uh, the the ones that pertain to uh, uh, to, to Motel Hell and uh, Doug McClure or Land or People or at the Earth's Core. Um, they, they send me copies, so I have got quite a, quite a nice collection of them. And I, yeah, very important. I mean, it's. Uh, because there's a big following. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. I was su surprised um, uh, how many people like yourself saw those films, especially in America. You know, mm -hmm. when I them in England, and because you never knew, you know, once once they ran in England, that, that was as far as I knew the end of their life. I, mean, I didn't realize that uh, they were distributed so thoroughly or you know, well over here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, well, no, I love them. When, when did you find, when did you know that Motel Hell like still had a following, you know, long after you make it? Um, I tell you when I was doing a TV show and the, 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 uh, the clapper boy and we were still on film doing a film. And this is, I think it must've been in the late eighties or early nineties. And the clapper boy said, Oh, he said, Mr. Connor in those days, they called you Mr. Um, <laughs> Mr. Connor. He said, uh, uh, you did Motel Hell. And I said, yeah, yeah. And he said, I studied that at film school. So that's when I thought, <laughs> oh my goodness, you know, that, uh, that we, we've got a, we've got a little bit of history uh, going, going there. And, uh, he said, yeah, and everybody was like, it's a, it's a cult film, you know? I said, really? And no, I said, <laughs> so I, I was quite surprised that they actually taught, uh, Motel Hell was part of the uh, curriculum. <laughs> yeah, nothing, nothing gets Motel Motel Hell because I really like it. But that is odd to me that that would be like used in a in a film school. Yeah, yes, yeah. Well, <laughs> it, well, it, it was kind of the end of. Well, no, I mean they had made some slasher films before that, obviously, mm -hmm. but it was the end of that kind of because it didn't do that well at the box office, sadly. Um, but it, it was the end of what I uh, uh, horror genre that's thought out, or that is a, a little bit more going for it than just you know slashing people and bashing mm -hmm. their heads and, uh, for for the sake of it, and not no, no story. You know? Yeah, definitely. So, uh, what was it like to film the big uh, chainsaw battle at the end? Oh, <laughs> that was yeah. <laughs> Well, I tell you, it was a bit smelly uh, because all those um, pigs' heads in there and mm. parts were were real. And of course, we shot out at a ranch place, and um, 
when it was April, May, 1980, and it was it was jolly hot. And of course, those things sat in there for about four or five days, and it really, you know, then with the lights and the you know the body and the movement, boy, I tell you, it was uh, it was it got a bit smelly <laughs> after a while. But you know, it was good fun to shoot, and I did, yeah, a good stunt guy. It, it worked out a lot of the moves, and you know how we were going to do it, and so on. Um, yeah, it, it was a bit hot and. We were glad, glad to get out in the fresh air. Yeah. <laughs> do Do you get like uh Do you get anything from like merchandise? Because they make a lot of Mo Hotel Hell like T-shirts and hoodies and, and merchandise today. No, I don't know. I don't get it. not a dime. Okay. But, uh, it was give us. Um, there was a guy who sent me. Um, it's called Manny Yak. Horror oh thing. yeah, I'm I'm friends with him. Yeah, he makes him. He's a really good art artist. Yeah, and uh, he sent me some uh, transfers. And uh, the other other week, I got these um uh, the, the the horror the pin of it. Yeah, of, uh, holding the uh, which was kind of. But no, I don't. Uh, I often get um had I got any of the um the original uh, anything from the set. You know, mm-hmm. the time ago. If only I'd thought about it, I would have. Uh, Collected, you know, all the, uh, the, uh, the the things that were on the the, the table and, and any any props. But of course, you you know, you, you know, don't think about that. No, yeah, course. when you're doing it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So let's see. Get some uh, questions here from uh, various people. Heather Sue Lynn wants to know. Uh, this is my favorite scene. She posted a picture of uh, the garden scene. But how long did it take to find actors willing to be buried up to their necks? <laughs> not very long yeah. everybody, everybody wants to work and uh-huh. um they they they're all you know everybody's there we obviously there's a trench under the ground and so uh-huh. on and so forth and then uh, uh hardboard with holes just put their heads through but of course ratzenberger was terrible he used to he he smuggled a stick in and he would tickle <laughs> the girls you know once they were in there under the you know and they thought there were snakes and spiders and stuff <laughs> he really he was a he was a bit of a prankster uh, anyway um no they, they they everybody um everybody joined in and uh no problem uh doing that so you know the whole thing <laughs> was <laughs> funny as well so yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, where well, where did the voice come from for the for the uh for the people that are buried that he he was um the the boys found him. Uh, he he had a um, trachotomy, uh, so he had a, a hole in his throat, mm-hmm. you know, uh, in his neck. And he we so we took it. We took him to film. Uh, I don't know how we got to interview him, but anyway, somehow we did. Well, I don't know how they found him. Uh, sorry, I can't remember his name. But mm-hmm. we he we he we ran the film uh, for him and. Uh, I can't remember whether he went to his house to record the, the, the things or he came to the studio. But anyway, no, he watched the film and he did all the noises in the garden and so on and so forth and uh, various grunts and groans. Yeah, no, he, he had this um, uh, uh, operation. So he every oh. he's through the hole in his throat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's interesting. How, like, how, how did you go about finding him? Did like, did you seek someone out like that, or did someone just Isn't happen to know him? Or? The sound editor came up with him, or uh, the boys did um, to get us. We had a very good sound editor on it. In fact, it was an English guy who, um, I think, it's Gordon Daniels, who I'd worked with in England, and he had moved to America, you know, to find fame and fortune or work, basically. Um, and I get he he either came up with the idea or somebody suggested to him uh, where to find this chap, either out in Moore Park or Simi Valley or somewhere like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that I, I, I didn't find him, but uh, somebody on the crew did. Mm-hmm. So, were you offered many uh, horror movies after Dumo Hotel Hell? I did. Um, no, I wasn't actually. I wasn't. I was. Um, I got sidetracked into television, um, no, no, but I wasn't. No, I, I wasn't inundated with offers for horror films. I'm afraid to say, I did do one a little later called "The House Where Evil Dwells," 
mm-hmm. um, which uh, yeah, I'm not too proud of. But anyway. <laughs> So how, how how did you get into the t- into TV? The um, well, I'd done a bit of TV. I'd done some Space ninety nine uh, in uh, England. Mm-hmm. Um, what happened here? It, again, you know, I got I got a manager, and his wife was head of business affairs or um, assistant at business affairs at Columbia TV, and. Um, she got me in to meet um, producers there, and I got. I landed North and South, the Civil War series. The mm-hmm. second, I did the second one of that, and that was in a, like a twelve-hour mini-series. So, I, you know, I got into that. I got into. Um, uh, I did some Heart to Hearts of Remington Steel, uh, but you know, there's a one-hour. Uh, kind of uh, TV things in the eighties, um, you know, which bread and butter kept me going. And um, you know, while you st- try and get your own, you know, in the meantime, I was trying to get my own scripts and projects going, but uh, to no avail. Uh, however, um, yeah, and that uh, you know, once you get into the mi- the mini series, those big mini series, uh, it um, you know, you get a sort of international name as well. Mm-hmm. So I went off to India and. To, to uh, Greece and places to do four six hour miniseries. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the, that's uh, wild. The, the only other feature film I think I did was uh, Sunset Grill. Uh, Peter, uh, Peter in it. Uh, mm-hmm. um, anyway, yeah. So yeah, that's how I got um, I got sidetracked basically. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what well, what kind of stuff did you uh, did you want to do? Like you said, you were writing scripts for yourself. Well, I mean, I, I love psychological thrillers, mm-hmm. film noir, and that kind of uh, those those edgy edgy type of films. Uh, my, but of course, they're not. They weren't that that popular. Um, they weren't. Um, they, they don't make a lot of money, and it's it's hard to get them made. Even even today, film noir is not too easy to get done, mm-hmm. uh, and so on. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Uh, Paul wants to know. I'd like to know which segment uh, is his favorite from Beyond the Grave. Well, my my favorite. Yeah. Um, um, I, I'd have to recall them. Uh, <laughs> the the I like the David Warner one. I think was was quite creepy. Um, the John, I tell you the Donald Pleasant one. Uh, the Donald Pleasant and Angela Pleasant. I mean, seeing those two. Play together, uh, you know, father and daughter, with the same eyes, those creepy eyes that they both got. Um, mm-hmm. And I, Dinah Dawes, who was a, a, an English film star at the time, and um, it's quite a nice cast in that that little segment alone. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, that worked out. That worked out very well indeed. So that, yeah, that, I guess that's my favourite. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. I also want to know, uh, did you ever see any of the Friday the 13th TV series that seemed to be inspired by Cushing's character? Uh, no, I'm afraid I didn't. Mm-hmm. I'm sure Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee have inspired quite a lot of, uh, <laughs> uh, uh spin-offs, uh, uh, uh-huh. uh, and <laughs> copying and, 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 uh, I did have them both in one film. I had Peter Cushing and, uh, Christopher Lee and, thing called Arabian Adventure. So that was um That's uh, pretty amazing. Achievement because mm-hmm. uh, you know long after they'd he'd finished playing Dracula and so on. Mm-hmm. Um, both were real pros and they were so good to me and uh, uh made life very easy. Not at all difficult and uh, and whatever. Yeah. Really good. Mm-hmm. Uh Seb Godin who uh, who's a independent uh, filmmaker in Canada wants to know any interesting stories about his 2004 adaptation of Frankenstein? Oh, um, that, I was, yeah, I, I, I was pleased with that one. It was a very good script, very good script. And it, it pretty as close to the book as you can be, because the end kind of goes uh, all over the place. Um, you know, film wise, traveling wise, but we did mm-hmm. end up on a, a glacier in Norway to do the, you know, the, um, the, uh, uh, now I'm just trying to think. It, it was pretty straightforward. We had a 
great uh, crew. We shot it in uh, Slovakia uh, in an old Russian film studio. Um, trying to think. Again, we had a lovely cast. But I don't think there was anything... Uh, uh, it's just a, the shooting the the glacier was magic you know we went up we had this huge sledge you know almost like a tank for going over crevices that and on the on this thing the 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 there were the huskies the sleigh sledges or the camera equipment and whole crew and we trundle up way up into the mist and the top of this glacier freezing cold and whatever and it was you know that was a really magical moment uh you know, seeing them, the, the two of them, uh, going through through the in and out of the mist, and the, and we were really up on a huge glacier. And those huskies, they they go in a straight line; they don't stop, they don't turn left or right, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but it all worked out very well. So that I mean, that was a magic, that was a magic moment, shall we say? But I can't think of anything that was really. I mean, a lot of the s- snow stuff. We, mm-hmm. You know, we shot in, in in bright sunshine sometimes you know, when it was a phony one. But uh, no, no, um, if I think of something, I'll, I'll try and <laughs> talk a bit. Uh, but uh, no, it was um, it was just, just a, again, great cast, great cameraman, terrific cameraman. Um, in a great uh, sort of old, the, the technicians, the art department were a lot of... Um, it worked for the Russians, you know, in Russia, uh, occupied Slovakia, uh, mm. and worked on a lot of their films. So they were really first class uh, uh, artists and technicians, and they did a wonderful job on the laboratory and things like that, mm. creating that. Yeah. Did Did you ever have any, uh, like, uh, did you run ever run into any trouble uh, filming in, in in another country? Um, let me think. Mm. I think India did we have a bit of trouble, but it wasn't trouble. It, they, we wanted to shoot in the Maharaja's palace in in um, Mysore, and we had to take money and we had to bribe him basically to let us to shoot in there. And so the producer, you know, made up his box and with money and gold and all sorts of stuff to uh, entice him. Um, and t- took it along. We actually never met him, but the, so the box was taken in, and then we were allowed to shoot the exterior of one of the the main the main gates or something, where they used to keep all the elephants and stuff. You know, the old days they had hundreds of elephants in these places, and uh, he allowed us just to shoot one little corner, but only for like two hours. I mean, we never met the guy, so I mean, there's a bit of yeah, a bit of. Uh, Old em- em- empire bribery and corruption going on there. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I can't, have we ever been thrown out of a? We've never been told to stop shooting or walk away. No, we, usually we can talk our way out of things and uh, manage to get the shots. Sort of, yeah. You know, we're, you know <laughs> either bribing people or you know. <laughs> right. or, no, no. So I mean, my my career has been fairly um fairly straightforward in those those terms. I haven't been. Thrown in jail for <laughs> not yet anyway. Right. Yeah, no. there's still time here, but yeah. <laughs> By the way, uh, Troy is here with us now as well. Uh, my co-host here, he's a little late. But... Oh, hi, Troy. <laughs> How we doing? Good, good to hear from you. And you, uh, thank you. I'm having a good time. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been loving the story so far. Well, you know, I, they're good. They're good questions, and he, and, uh, and he was very, very. Uh, he keeps, he keeps, uh, keeps the pace up. You know, <laughs> good, Even good. When I've sort of floundered around and I can't remember things. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. Uh, Jeff Burr, who's a, a film director, a friend of mine, he wants to know about uh, Shane Rimmer and Brian Hales. Uh, yes, Shane. Uh, Shane was. I, I tell you, he was one of the, uh, the loveliest. Of people, let alone first class actor, uh, and uh, he didn't he, he passed away recently, didn't he? Um, mm-hmm. he yes, he I've had Shane in three or four of my movies, I think, and of course, he's he's the the go to uh, Canadian, I think, and, and uh, he was the go to guy in England to uh, if you wanted a sort of an American sounding uh, actor, but not in that, he was he became a good friend in those days, and uh. 
um, the family. And I think he bought he bought my mini off me at one stage, uh, car I had. And um, yes, and uh, Brian Hales it was he was he was again a real gentleman. He 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 had uh, cancer when we were writing. Which one was that? What was the Brian Hales film? Um, was that Warlords or no? Uh, um, look here. Arabian Adventure, wasn't it? I think called Ra- Arabian Adventure. Not yeah, sure. Brian. Yeah, he was. He was a lovely guy, but he he was suffering from cancer. And I think he, I think he even, I think he died before the film was completed. Mm. Uh, sadly, but you know, he was a uh, very very talented. And there's a tragedy when that happens. Yeah, yeah. young people. Mm. Yeah, she was uh, Warlords of the Deep. War- which, Warlords of the Deep was it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. It um, he died that year that it, it came out, so I'm not sure if he got to see it or nothing. No, it was very, very soon, very soon after. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't think he got to see the final film. I'm not sure. Mm. So. That's a dream. Um, I just want to know about uh, Magic Christian and yeah. if if Peter Sellers was in the editing room of the of Magic Christian. He did. He came in the cutting rooms, but he never. It was never to look at. Uh, uh, sequences or have an input into the uh, uh, the editing at all, but he 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 wanted to get his son into the cutting rooms. Um, so he used to come in and chat with me and and so on. And uh, and one day he 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 gave my myself and my assistant a, a one-on-one performance, and he read. I don't know if you recall. Um, Warner Brothers and the Marx Brothers were having a, um, a back and forth about uh, um, the, using Casablanca, uh, the title Casablanca in a, mm-hmm. in a night in Casablanca. Mm-hmm. And Sellers walked up and down the cutting rooms. One minute he was reading the the uh, the messages that Marx had written. Then the next minute he was reading the reply from the Warner Brothers lawyers. I mean, totally. I mean, he, he absolutely. We were coursing. I mean, it was really so that yes, he did come in the cutting rooms, but he came in <laughs> to tell us some jokes and stuff. It's <laughs> <laughs> in great conditions. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, you know, in the middle of that movie, um, there was this the dreadful um, the murder at uh, at uh, you know um, Sharon Tate murder. Mm, yeah, he, he left. Uh, he left for four or five days and came over to see uh because he was great friends with them, with them all. Mm. yeah no, that was a, that was a there was everybody was in that film um and there's big big yeah. big cast in that yeah ringo star and... yes yeah yeah <laughs> paul mccartney came down and he you know he was uh and it recommended the uh the bad finger group to play the, the music and uh, and so on yeah, that's pretty wild. So, yeah. uh, uh, Jeff also wants to know what, why was Stuart Whitman let go from the land that time forgot? Uh, yeah, right. Now, Stuart Whitman, that's right. Um, uh, yeah, I th- think it was that I think it was that AIP or Sam Arkoff's company wanted preferred Doug McClure over Stu Whitman. Um, but um, who's Milton's partner in New York had gone ahead and done a deal with Stu Whitman's agents and you know promised him X amount of money. Um, and then when we got the distributor, I think the distributor said, no, no, we want, uh, you know, he's not a big enough name. Uh, we want you know, someone like Doug McClure, who I guess at that time was a bigger drawer and so on. And I that's how it came about. So I think they had to pay uh, um, Stu um, Whitman off. They had to pay, you know, had to pay him because they'd mm. done a with him. But I, I, I'm, I think it was because uh, Doug was a, a bigger draw in terms of box mm. office. Mm-hmm. So uh, there's a weird trivia on your IMDb page that uh, it says that you've directed five uh, Christmas Santa Claus movies. So is, yes. is that because you like Santa or is it just some, just a coincidence? <laughs> no. <Yeah. laughs> no, not at my age. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I've twigged it. I've twigged that uh, there's not a Santa really. Uh, oh, right. No, I mean, I've done in, in my uh, 
uh, the, the last few years, I've done quite a few Hallmark genre pictures, and uh, you know they're always good fun. But they do make an awful lot of Christmas movies or um, Thanksgiving movies or you know related yeah. cards, Hallmark cards. <laughs> and oh, that reason, makes sense. I didn't even think about that. That makes I perfect know, sense. I a champion uh, <laughs> uh, Christmas director uh, for some reason. <laughs> Uh, yes, it's not my choice, but uh, but they're always fun. They're always enjoyable, and um, you know, it's a nice, a good crew, nice crews again, nice actors. So, uh, and uh, you know, the, you're 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 behind the camera, so it's uh, it's all that counts. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, have you ever been asked to uh, do like a horror like conventions, like as a as a guest? Um. Oh, um, yeah, I've been to a couple um, down in Newport Beach. I think there was been oh, okay. one down there. And uh, and then I had a guy call me up and said, you know, you should go to these conventions and sign photographs and, you know, make a hundred bucks a photograph or something. Um, and I said, yeah, OK, all right. Um, but that's the last I ever heard. So I've no, <laughs> no one's ever no one's right. said, really. All and, right. Yeah, I'll put your name out there for your interest. I know some people. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You give me a little cut on the side if you do well. If, 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 if no, it's all right. Okay. Yeah. Thank all right. you. <laughs> Fair enough. So, um, what would you like to, um, would you eventually like to do another uh, horror movie? Oh yes, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm after one at the moment. Um, and it was made as a TV movie, but it's a terrific book. Uh, actually, there's two books um, that I'm after. Uh, one, I'm trying to track down the the, uh, the copyright or who owns it because you know it was written way back when, and uh, and they're they're sort of pulp um, detective type uh, horror type stories, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's been made, but it wasn't made very well. This one particular one I'm after. I won't tell you what it is because I haven't found out. I'm trying to mm -hmm. track where the rights are. Um, no, I'd, I'd, I'd do it. Um, and I've, in fact, I've got one um, called Mortuary Girl, uh, which uh, I had, had commissioned with a, a writer friend um, called Mortuary Girl, but I haven't got anywhere with it, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, but I keep trying. On, on that. No, I'd love to do one because they, you know, they're 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 enjoyable. They're good fun, and you can, you know, you can push the envelope a bit with it and yeah nowadays mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, it and it seems like uh um a lot of horror movies like live forever like people talk about them for uh and they, they always do. find a new audience yes it, they do they sort of cross boundaries i mean uh yeah yeah i think yeah well it's just it's because you know i i watched moto hell when it came out well not when it first came out but because uh, I would have been four, but like, when it first came out on uh, VHS tape, but uh, you know, a lot of people who like it now probably weren't even born when when the movie was made, and it's made, like uh, it, you yeah, know, it just keeps finding new people. That's that's where I I find that I get um, fathers, you know, ever, um, email me and say, well, you know, I've just my son's now old enough to to uh, to show him. Um, uh, motel hell despite my <laughs> you know his the wife's uh, objections um so it's like a second generation of being <laughs> tutored in <laughs> things like motel hell and from yeah yeah. Uh -huh. yeah it's very cool so when i was a kid i watched it really as a horror movie and now i watch it and it's still you know horror obviously but it's a lot more a uh, fun movie uh when i get older yes 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 i mean it would it is slightly tongue in cheek, but you you know play it straight. Don't and don't, um, don't <laughs> yeah. take the Mickey out of it. You know. Yeah, that that though that always works best. If if yeah. they if they're if you could tell that they're like in on the joke in the performance, it's it's never as it's not as funny to me. No, no, no. And then you'll be you'll be you're betraying the genre as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. And you'll always remember like the uh, the little jingle there about Farmer Vincent's fritters. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You, but uh, the best line, of course, was the preservative sign. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Oh, right. that one is has so many great <laughs> quotes to it, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. 
So uh, do, are you on social media at all for people to follow you, like on Twitter or Facebook or anything? No, I don't, not really. I, mean, I think I've got a Facebook thing, but I don't really, you know, bother too much with it. Yeah, uh, you're better off. Yeah, yeah it, it's, <laughs> it, it's so time-consuming. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm, I still, you know, optioning books and doing screenplays and having, you know, having a go at things, but to, to sort of mess around with that, just, I don't know, kind of a bit of a waste of life, I find. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> it is it very uh, i kind of ha- we kind of have to to uh get the show out there but it does take a lot of your time yeah yeah of course yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, great well, i really appreciate it coming on i had a lot of fun talking with you no and you and i, I really appreciate the intelligent questions and uh and an and, and, and interest and then and, and uh keeping 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 the patter going and uh, so. <laughs> very good All right, so, yeah